Given a tree, you might be a discreet mathematician if you ask, how many? In 1857, Arthur Cayley began the study of labeled trees. How many different labeled trees are there with n vertices? Suppose we label the vertices 1 through n. How many distinct labelings can we produce? Now, if the vertices are in a line, then there are n factorial possible labelings. Or are there? To answer that question, we need to define what we mean by distinct labelings. Cayley's idea, translated into modern terms, two labelings of a graph are the same if the same labeled walks appear in both. For example, our first graph has the walk 1 to 2 to 3. This walk doesn't exist in the second graph, but it does in the third. In fact, all walks in the first and third graphs are the same, so the third graph has the same labeling as the first. This means that if all vertices are in a line, every distinct labeling corresponds to two permutations. So the number of labelings is n factorial halves, if we're dealing with a graph where all vertices are in a line. What if our n vertices aren't in a line? We could give a formula for computing the number of labeled trees. But we won't. At least not right away. Remember, it's the journey, not the destination. And, more importantly, once an algorithm exists, a computer can implement it faster, cheaper, and more accurately than a human can. Which means you don't want to spend your time memorizing formulas and algorithms you want to spend your time learning how to create these things. So let's analyze the problem. To that end, remember, concrete never hurts. Also, when we do get a formula, we can use our analysis to verify the accuracy of the formula. It will be useful to remember some results about trees. If a tree has n vertices, it has n minus 1 edges, and it has at least one vertex of degree 1, which we called a leaf or sometimes a pendant vertex. So let's consider n equals 1. A tree with n equals 1 vertex has zero edges and only one possible labeling. If we go up to n equals 2, a tree with n equals 2 vertices has one edge, and since this is a line of vertices, it can be labeled in two factorial halves one way. With three vertices, we can arrange them in a line. This gives us three possible labelings. We can also arrange three vertices in other ways, but they're isomorphic to a line of vertices. So these don't represent new graphs, and they don't give us new labelings. We can arrange n equals 4 vertices in the line. This gives us 4 factorial halves 12 possible labelings. Next, we find other trees with 4 vertices. One possibility is a star. Now, there's four factorial ways to label the four vertices, but how many are distinct? So remember, we're defining distinct labelings based on whether the paths appear in both. So in this tree, all length two paths must pass through the center. So if we change the label of the center vertex, we get a different labeling. But if we change the labels of the peripheral vertices, we don't. So the center vertex can be labeled in one of 
four ways, but the labelings of the outer vertices all correspond to the same labeling. So the star has four possible labelings. What about other trees on four vertices? For example, the tripod, well, that's actually the same as the star, and a graph like this is the same as having all vertices in a line. In fact, we find there are only two distinct trees with n equals four vertices, the line and the star. The line has four factorial halves, different labelings, and the star has four different labelings, and so there are 16 distinct labelings of trees with n equals 4 vertices. What if we try to find all labelings of trees with n equals 5 vertices? We need to find all possible trees with n equals 5 vertices. And this is a hard problem. We need to create a tree, but also decide when two trees are isomorphic. But wait, there's more. Actually, that's not a good thing. We need to label the vertices, but also decide whether two labelings are the same. So the problem is the approach we've been using requires us to analyze many cases. So analysis of cases always works, but is often tedious. And so we might ask the question, is there a better way? We'll take a look at that next.